millions are born every day and compete for the limited resources available. Hence, optimum utilization of resources is paramount for our longevity and proliferation. Laws have been created and enforced for the sustenance of all. However, because of greed, everyone tries to grab as much as possible for their own selfish gain. This results in a fight for survival. The strong kill the weak, and suddenly, greed overshadows the basic tenets of survival. The greed, in turn, leads to fear, panic, chaos, and destruction before the return to harvest. The process ensures that the inefficient and incompetent give way to the strong and vibrant. This cycle repeats itself time and again and only those who are adaptive to change in the external environment survive. For any transaction to happen in an economy, three things are necessary. A buyer, a seller, and me, the invisible hand. I am the collective self-interest of all of you. If you are a buyer, you demand low price and better quality, or in one word, value for money. And if you are a seller, you demand high prices and sustainable growth from the business, or in one word, value for the stakeholders money demand is the force that I use to measure the self-interest of buyers and supply is the force that I use for checking the self-interest of sellers when self-interest exists for both the parties I get equilibrium price and information about what to produce how much to produce and at what price to produce this ultimately leads to optimum utilization of the scarce resources of the economy. Fulfillment of self-interest of both the parties leads to my birth. And as I grow, these markets also grow and reach their optimum level. Similarly, when millions of buyers and sellers like you act for their own self-interest, I become operative in every market. And with my growth, I ensure growth of all markets and hence growth of the overall economy. This leads to social good, which is my ultimate destination. Now, to measure the self-interest of millions of buyers and sellers and to see the aggregate effect of all markets. This set of tools does not work. For looking at the accumulated effect on buyers and sellers, I use these two forces. These two forces help me to identify what buyers and sellers are thinking cumulatively about the value of resources around them. The point where these two forces meet is equilibrium. At this point, I get overall equilibrium prices, which help me in effective allocation of all the scarce resources of the economy. Broadly, there are two kinds of situations which emerge when these millions of buyers and sellers interact with each other in various markets. One is near to equilibrium situation and the other is far from equilibrium situation. Most of the time, the majority of markets are at the near to equilibrium situation. This means that there is a single correct set of expectations and all market participants converge towards it. These market activities are routine, everyday events that are repetitive in nature. But occasionally, the market is at a very far from equilibrium situation representing 
irrational expectations of market participants either in positive or negative direction. These irrational expectations originate because market participants cannot base their decisions always on past knowledge available with them. They have to anticipate the future and the future is contingent on the decisions that people make at the present moment. To take the right decisions, people would have to guess correctly the decisions of all the other participants and their consequences, but that is impossible. These decisions are bound to be tentative and biased. That is the generic cause of distortions. Sometimes these distortions could be in an extremely positive direction which represents excessive human greed or making fortune out of nothing. On the other hand, they could be in an extremely negative direction which represents excessive human fear or making misfortune out of nothing. These extreme natures are also called as boom, positive and bust, negative. You might have noticed my journey. It is only from the self-interest fulfillment of individuals in various markets to overall social good in the economy. So simple, isn't it? But things are not as simple as they seem. In this journey of self-interest to social good, there is a big trap. The trap made of the greed and fear of buyers and sellers. This trap makes my journey unending and painful. Let's see how. All the activities of the free market are depicted on this path of self-interest to social good. When the market is at the near to equilibrium situation, there is self-interest fulfillment of all the participants and there is maximum social good. But in far from equilibrium situations, because of imperfect information, greed and uncertainty, market participants often don't pay attention to the boundaries of the system and cross them involuntarily to pursue their greed. Once the greed-led initiatives proliferate across economy pockets, the economy becomes unstable, thereby leading to fear and then collapse. From the collapse emerges a new order which rectifies the issues in the old order and also introduces new philosophies of the times. These structural changes can be called creative destruction or cycle from boom to bust. So if all markets are at near equilibrium we have maximum social good and efficient allocation of resources. But if markets move into far from equilibrium because of irrational and greedy incentives of participants, they get trapped in the boom to bust cycle, ultimately leading to creative destruction. I have been traveling for centuries in my quest for maximum social good and have not reached my destination yet. The biggest threat to my objective is human greed and fear. When these shadowy natures of all of you prevail, economies move towards the far from equilibrium situations leading to destruction and forcing me to become inoperative. Prices typically have a tendency of increasing over time, which is transmission of positive information about the economy representing rising demand for goods and services. Let me introduce you to the creature that moves as a result of the price fluctuations in the overall economy. This creature is initially found on the self-interest tree. He is the driving force for me to move from self-interest to maximum social good. He is a sign for me of the transmission of positive information that there is a rising demand in the economy for goods and services, but if not controlled, he moves to the greed tree 
where he reflects the greedy state of mankind. This movement means that there is a transmission of far from equilibrium information because of higher aggregate demand known as inflation. He can also move to the fear tree where he reflects the fearful state of mankind. This movement is a result of transmission of negative information about low aggregate demand for goods and services in the economy. He is then known as deflation. It is an outcome of the extreme pessimism about the economy among the humans. This leads to the rise of unemployment.